What's your mother say? <laughs> you are not my son anymore if you're getting on the ring. <laughs> Meet Palebo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. At the age of 50, he made a bold decision. He sold everything, his house, his car, his furniture, and set out with a quest to visit every single country in the world, documenting everything along the way. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. This episode of the Radio Vagabond Podcast is brought to you in part by Hotels25.com. It searches around 15 of the major websites at the same time and tells you where it's available and where you get the best price. That saves you both time and money. Hotels25.com, it's best price guarantee. Okay, five dollars. Three one dollar, please, please. Three one dollar. Okay, four one dollar. <laughs> In the end of the last episode of the Radio Vagabond podcast, we were laughing with two adorable little girls that tried to sell us magnets for the fridge. They were adorable and they also had a good time laughing with us. But if you really take a step back, it's kind of sad that they have to do this instead of playing. But that's quite normal here. Children work. Here in Siem Reap, I also spoke to a young guy that grew up in a poor family on a farm. Every morning he got up really, really early to help the family, and one of his jobs was to climb up into the palm trees before school. Being a child in my family, it seemed to be very difficult to describe and tell you to understand how a child of 15 years old and climb to the coconut tree to get for sale and climb to a palm tree to get a sugar to make a sugar palm until it cost me a surgery in in the age of 17 years old You need a surgery, why? Uh, because uh, the doctor said I work over my energy I was so small, I was so tiny but I work so hard, harder than my father does I has to get up at 4.30 I'll find the same in order to climb with 25 a uh, palm tree and to be ready and put it for my family for my mother make a sugar, sugar palm and then I uh, was a bus take a bus and arrive at school at 9 and coming back at 12 or 1 arrive home having lunch and go to the farm with my family and coming back at late night and then we start our meal at 9 or 10 p.m. And then we got to bed until 2 or sometime until 1 because in the evening I have to climb up to the coconut uh, uh, palm tree again in order to get sugar. So we make a sugar from 9 until 12 or 1 hour a.m. And then the, and the, ne- the next morning up again at, at 4.30? The next morning get up again at 4.30. Okay. Most is around 4.30 to 5. But they say that the teenagers should have eight nine hours sleep eight or nine hours sleep <laughs> i don't know where it was where it was a nine hour and eight hour been while i was a kid but i just know the eight hour and nine hour was with me to work on for family he also tells me that it, it wasn't something the parents were forcing him to do but he was a responsible young man and couldn't just sit back and do nothing my parents not forced me to do so but I cannot stand and sit and wait to see them. You, I I, have, I cannot just sit simply see them do and act something and then I stay silent. I cannot do that. Yeah, I cannot leave them alone. Since this 15-year-old boy was climbing palm trees and even had to go through surgery because he was working too hard, a lot has happened. The young guy I'm talking to is today 24 years old and through hard work and quite a bit of luck, his life has been completely changed. Today he is the manager of the hotel we're staying at. Uh, My name is Putsa, I am a general present manager at the hotel 
and I managed the hotel for almost for two years. We're staying at a wonderful little boutique hotel where we get to talk a lot to the young manager, Putza. He's been a manager for two years, but he started five years ago cleaning rooms. Sure. Uh, I exposed into the hospitality experience in um, 2012, in September 2012. And the first day I start, I work as a, a housekeeping, the one who cleaned the room. But you see, because it seemed to be like um, a baby worker, because when I apply for working in the hotel at first, uh, I apply, I said, I put whatever I can do, please give me job. Yeah, anything. So, yeah. He was cleaning hotel rooms at the same time going to university and also trying to find time to help his parents on the farm. He was almost in a precision way. He had to drop out of school because he couldn't pay for the education when his life suddenly took a surprising turn. It happened the day an American couple moved into the hotel. They saw something unique in this hard-working boy, so they decided to sponsor him and pay for his education. Uh, at the time, I was uh, getting into a room of a couple of American people, and I cleaned the room. And then they asked me some um, information about what they need me to do inside the room. And then I probably could answer them the English. And then later on, they talked to my manager and to ask about my personal background. And then he ca- he came an appointment with me myself, and then to ask about the salary, how it's going with me. Actually, I time to stop school in my final year already because I know that I can't afford my family and university fee, even myself expanding with the 65 US salary. It seemed to be a very small amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it it made me smile a lot every day, every morning that. <laughs> I say, how come the best fortune came to me? I am not only get a fortune to meet American people, but I also have a very great opportunity to meet the owner of the hotel here. The one that who gave me the career and chance to get this job opportunity to expose my management experience that I never do before. The turning point for Putza is one of the reasons that he has a dream himself of helping the poor people. Did you think that you were going to have a long career in, 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 in the hospitality business by then? Uh, I have some idea before I came to the hotel that I really love this hotel and then I really love these people here because they are friendly. This, they make me have a long memory to be with them. But what I want to do in life is to run an NGO and helping the poor people who were born in the same situation as like me. He wants to start his own NGO and give back and help the poor kids in Cambodia. Kids that come from the same background as himself. What I can turn back for the university uh, fee is to open an NGO and helping the other kids, providing free English education, mm. helping poor people, it might be the great thing we can do, we can do in our society. Mm. Even though his salary here is not impressing, he's already helping right now. He's helping a 15-year-old girl, Anna, that comes from a similar background as himself. It seems like a crazy story that to me to meet another family which is the same like me while I was three years ago. It seemed to be make sense, really make sense to me that I really want to have people. When I see those, so I decide to, to spend my own salary and helping her family. Actually, I also have a fund from my friend, uh, but it was not work. I, I actually know that most people, it hard to, uh, to do with a humanitarian work for helping the other people. But I'm telling you that if you spend 10 US dollars today and then you can keep five for the other, it might be better because many people need more help than you and then need more help than me as well. And then other thing is uh, putting yourself down and learn with the people mean to reuse your power. Yeah. That's why it will teach you a lot how to uh, basically understand a situation which is you never been before. So you're putting uh, money aside for for her education? Sure. We what we are doing for her is to 
um, giving her for a daily expanding. It's not a really big help, but at least we can uh, help her, uh, her, her parents some part of the family economic. But actually, 30 US dollar is not a very big amount. To be honest, while I was well compared to it was 10 years ago, it really much to me that I can't even get 100 real per day. You can't even get 100 real per day? And the 100 Cambodian real a day that puts us talking about, that is around 5 cent. It's hard to think to the passes to, to imagine how I can get, how I can spend a 100 real with daily expanding but just buying candy or some little bit Cambodian small cake and then that's it. Puts has promised to help Anna pay for her school, but it's not easy. However, he has a plan B. Um, probably I'm doing is uh, on the May if nothing change. I would like to uh, get on the ring again for boxing. He wants to go into a boxing arena and do a fight in a few months where he has the chance to win some money. What kind of boxing is it? Is it it's Cambodian it, boxing, a free, free Cambodian boxing. I want to do so. so that's with, with kicking and uh, everything? Kicking and fighting. Use all a part of your body. Oh, okay. Yeah. But just to make sure it's on the right way and then it makes the regulation of boxing on the ring. He's done it before, but that was a long time ago. And it seems crazy. And it's something his mother really doesn't like. What's your mother say? <laughs> you are not my son anymore if you're getting on the ring. <laughs> Putza is a small guy and the whole idea about him being in a boxing arena seems crazy to me. And and you and you, you, you get some money if you win and, and you don't if you lose. Uh, probably I may got very little amount or nothing, but I will get a little bit better amount if I uh, win if I won the uh, damage. But I hope that if I can get it, I will donate all the money to that girl family for helping them. He has the chance to win some money, money that he'll donate to the girl and her family. But he also has the risk of going away with nothing except a black eye and a couple of bruised ribs. We've been here for uh, for a little over a week now and uh, we're starting really to uh, to feel at home here uh, to us is actually we are a very typical hotel but we honestly try our best to serve everyone that we want to feed everyone and like make it home because we want everybody to be uh, happy and satisfied with what we are doing even we are not a, sta a high standard hotel but honestly we often feed the places and then we're happy to have everyone yeah Coming from uh, the, the Western world uh, to Asia, uh, you get this idea that all Asians are more or, or less the same. I bet you as an Asian think that people from Europe are more or less the same, but they're so different in Denmark and in, in Spain. But I've now been here in Asia for four or five months and uh, I can see some of the difference be between the people from Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos. and. What, what would you say is unique about the Can Cambodian people compared to uh, some of your neighboring countries? What is a, a special unique to Cambodian people is people are friendly. I don't, I have no really much idea which is about culture or which is about the Zen of the people itself. But the people is, when you go is on the way, inside the hotel or somewhere you meet up. The physical apparent look of them are really make attractive, especially people like smiling at the other. To the European people, what I have observed that if they don't even know each other before, it might be a problem or it's hard to make a communication together. But to Cambodian people, okay, they are friendly and then helpful. This is what I have observed to me myself and then to the people inside the hotel or the outside. People really might um, attempt to help each other better than the other country. 
This episode of the Radio Vagabond podcast is brought to you in part by Hotels25.com. It's a website that searches all the major hotel sites and tells you where you get the best price. No fees, no markup. Hotels25.com, it's best price guaranteed. If we go into a time machine and say, in 10 years time, uh, I come and visit you again, you'll be 35. What kind of uh, puts uh, would, would I meet then? What will you do in 10 years time? A uh, 10 years time, probably I may have family around 30 years old or 30 years old. But I may have another work that you can't ever imagine. I have a small NGO that I, including with many kids, and teaching English is helping poor people. Now, even now, I can't do it, but I hope that more than 10 years old, when you arise, something might change. And then I, I personally say, I really want to change the Cambodian society. Yes, this is what I expect to do in the next long life. We're on our way to China now, and you might remember that we didn't manage to get the visa when we were in Vietnam and also we weren't able to do it here in Cambodia. So we decided to go to Hong Kong, where it's quite easy to get. I've been there before, I've done a podcast from there, so I'm taking a small break. You can go back and listen to my Hong Kong episode if you like. But the next episode will be from Ningbo and Shanghai in China. And we're so looking forward to that. If you like this podcast, please subscribe in iTunes or the podcast app on your smartphone. You can see pictures, watch videos, and read much more on the radiovagabond.com. Palais can be reached for interviews and public speaking gigs on mail at the radiovagabond.com. My name is Palapo, and we gotta keep moving. See ya.